I'll call this meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we will have roll call, please, Ashley. Yes. Miller? Yes. Ellison? Yes. Mayor Wallace? Yes. Well, welcome, members of the council, invited guests, I guess. Um, we shall start uh, the meeting with, once again, with my quote for the day or week, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this one happens to be uh, from a Vietnamese proverb. Um, when eating fruit, remember the one who planted the tree. Today we want to recognize the one who planted the tree. I want to be the first to congratulate Blaine on his retirement and to thank him for his leadership over the past 16 years. I felt this quote speaks to many of Blaine's accomplishments in the area of sustainability within the city of Morris. Later in the meeting tonight, we will celebrate our city's recent Green Step Cities Award, achieving steps four and five as of June 12, 2023. We, have, we now have solar panels on our city buildings where there were none before. Through our partnership with the University of Minnesota Morris and Stevens County, we now have an organic composting program. We have a new centralized water treatment plant that will provide good clean water while reducing the concentration of chloride into our wastewater systems. His collaborative efforts with the members of the Morris Model, our sister city in Sauerbrück, Germany, and his lobbying efforts at the state level have helped accelerate the Climate Smart Municipality's mission of providing a cleaner and more efficient energy footprint for our community. Blaine literally put Morris on the map in this area, and we want to reassure him that we will continue the work that he has started. Safe to say that the citizens of Morris will enjoy the fruits of his labor for many years to come. <clears throat> Thank you, Blaine, and enjoy retirement. Thank you. Very nice. With that, we shall move on. Um, we have, first of all, uh, we have an item we need to add to our agenda, Council. A line item D under ordinances and resolutions. Uh, State of Minnesota contract for airport apron project. That'll be item D. Having added that, is there anything else that anybody would like to add? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I so move. I will second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Now we have uh, Jason and Rebecca here. They're going to talk to us a bit about the public safety aid funding. So you guys are certainly welcome to come up, or did you want to say anything or about it? You're sure welcome to at this point? Okay. Well, we're, I think we're going to, where's the resolution? We have a public safety aid funding request to have a joint city county Oh, yeah, that's the way we're going to do it. So yeah. um, there is no resolution. Yeah, so actually Rebecca uh, contacted me about this, and one of the things we didn't realize was the fact that during the legislative session, they actually allocated a large chunk of money in Minnesota and it was distributed out based upon populations. So every city in Minnesota is gonna get an allocated share. Our allocated share of the public safety funding is about $213,000. And so one of the, the items that was brought to our attention was uh, with uh, the Sheriff's Department law enforcement. As of this time, they do not have body cameras and they do have squad cameras and we had been buying squad cameras and. Um, actually, at the time, we had body cameras. Uh, they're, Morris had body cameras for a little while, but they're, they're cheaper systems, and then the rules and regulations on the body cameras were 
very extensive. And so it's not just a matter of having the equipment. You have to follow all the right procedures. You have to keep track of all the information. You have to uh, uh, keep, keep the history of it and all that kind of stuff and provide it. So uh, actually the Sheriff's Department responded to the uh, murder that took place in Cyrus. And one of the things that they were asked is for their body camera foot footage and they did not have any. And I think that was a surprise to the BCA that a sheriff's department did not have body cameras. And I think that really probably prompted a discussion in talking with, uh, with uh, uh, the sheriff and, and Jason and, and Rebecca that, you know, for, for their own safety, for their own um, uh, informational purposes, when prosecutors need to, to uh, prosecute uh, criminals that are utilizing or that are uh, arrested for things like this murder, um, the fact that you didn't have that information available might be a negative within within a case. And talking to Aaron Jordan, he's not here, but uh, uh, so it's a very important thing. So so ultimately, we're in a contract with the county for uh, law enforcement for six officers, and we had the discussion about um, acquiring uh, the body cams. Uh, for all the officers and to update the squad cams uh, with a new system that would incorporate all the right procedures and tools and everything to be able to, um, you know, have a state-of-the-art system that, that they could utilize when the time came. So they all are coordinated and, and, and everything. And, and so when I met with, with them, um, the recommendation was that Let's send this to the joint committee uh, for uh, working with the county to look at this issue. But, but ultimately, my recommendation is to the city council is this is something that we should look at doing. Um, we we can take some of that public safety money that we we're, we're going to get um, it, at some point in the future. Uh, we're providing equipment for law enforcement. It probably would have came through a different way, you know, if they if we have a decision to put body cameras on law enforcement people in Stevens County. We're gonna wind up paying a share of that um, just based upon how the contracts and things work. Well, here's an opportunity to do it now, get done with it. And we're still gonna have some money left over because I think it was, what, about $135,000. Um, I think I wrote it in here. $138,000 to do it. So we still have money left over. And um, one of the things I indicated is we could look at using some of that for updating our sirens with uh, um, some backup capabilities. So when the power goes out, we can still utilize our sirens, uh, which is something that Donna Griner and the, 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 the uh, um, emergency management people have been looking at and they're recommending that we look at doing that. And I think some of the cities are already starting to do that. And then whatever's left over, you know, you can set it aside for things like fire equipment and stuff like that. But the next step would be to have a discussion with, with that group and then bring it back to the city council for a decision on what you want to do with it. So they're here if you have any questions from them now about that, but it just, it seems like that's why this money is out there is to provide more more tools for public safety personnel. Does that yes. sound about right? And I yep. personally think it's a good use of our money. I mean, if it's something we're gonna be looking at participating in down the road anyway, and we have an opportunity to, you know, take advantage of I guess a windfall, so to speak, and put it to good use. Have we heard anything back on our fire grant? Not yet. Just what kind of funds are we going to be responsible for there if we do get that grant? That's probably going to be a couple hundred thousand, two, three hundred thousand dollars. It's the, the, what he's talking about is uh, we applied for a FEMA grant for our ladder truck. We 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 know that grants have been awarded already. We're not one of them. Uh, it's our understanding there may be more grants that are going to be awarded. Uh, that's that's about a $1.5 million, $4 million truck. Uh, so we're still waiting on that. We don't know yet. But yeah, I guess just looking to say if we have an obligation there, if we do get the grant, that what portion of that that we'll have to come up with and just 
just yeah, and I think wise, you if, know, and we so, could use it for that also, correct? We could use it for that, and the recommendation on that always was going to be that we have reserves in our capital outlay fund that could certainly it, it would be the best spending of maybe three hundred thousand dollars to get a you know one point four million dollar truck, you know. So I, I think ultimately there there's funds available to do that. This can only be spent on on these kind of things, so so it wouldn't be enough to cover that whole thing anyway. But yeah, that's we talked about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, just and, looking at all yep. potential options of the funds. Yeah. Could some of this extra um, that is possibly left over be used to for cameras for our parks and bathrooms? I mean, it says other. I, we, I haven't. We never talked about that. You know, if that would be considered under public safety. It's supposed to be. My understanding is there was a lot of um, requests on the table for everything from Arbor Radio funding to squad cameras. The legislator was toying around with the idea of making body cameras a requirement as opposed to a maybe should do. So that the funds were supposed to be for. And I haven't actually seen the final bill language, um, but it's supposed to be for law enforcement efforts. And then for other uh, dispatch, um, and then for uh, public safety response. So fire, um, if folks had um, ambulance services, they funded those sorts of things. But um, it was to kind of, I believe, to counter the multitude of requests they got for the surplus. They put it into one, and then they just dumped it out, as opposed to funding all of them. So we get $182,000 based on the formula. Um, a portion of that will be used towards this. So the amount that plane and state is 46%, which is what the percentage of officers are, um, we would fill with the rest. It's a five year, that's a pace for five years of it. The squad cameras have to be done. Um, they are end up lifing that product. And so if we're gonna do both of them, we should do both of them at one time. Um, and then it would be on a maintenance contract as opposed to a purchase where we don't own it anymore, which I think is a way a lot of these big contracts are going to dispatch them to a maintenance contract. Um, we did post it for the, the um, policy for public comment, received none. The board will set a public hearing to hear comments on from the public on the 18th. So far, we haven't gotten any feedback against it. Um, that's kind of diverting from your question, sorry. <laughs> but yes, it's so public safety and response. But you know, one could almost argue to Kim's point that that is the kind of hand foot, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got the camera there and somebody's monitoring the camera, you know, and you see an act, you know, vandalism in progress, you know, it might kind of tie right in with. Yeah, it's very that. possible. I think there's a lot of flexibility, but I, you know, I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen the final language. I got a summary of it in the okay. legislative update. There's always a summary and then the final thing. Yeah. Well, and, and this is not going to be a, re you don't have to request it. It's going to be distributed. Yes. Yeah. So so that money is coming at some point this year. And to add to your comment, they have put up five security cameras recently in the park. I knew they were doing it. I was just wondering if that was, you know, and they are actually security cameras because one time it, okay. Yep, they can get it off the phone okay. and out to watch them. And have we got those hooked up? When I last talked to the guys, they were still working on yep. getting the, no, they were, the app or getting... Up okay. Right now. Um, back to, is there a reason you had not had body cameras prior to now? I mean, just squad cameras and not body cameras? Mostly, like Wayne said, it, it wasn't actually the purchasing of the body cameras themselves. It was all the, the regulation that came with them, the retention period, the, the ability to redact the video. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not have the the Axon company we we'll look at going with, that's part of the cost of the cameras is we get access to their software that allows us to have that routine retention period scheduled in and the ability to redact the video if we ever have to release it to the public. So just probably a little higher level. I mean, just there's more you can do now with the body cameras than maybe three years ago when they were a big deal for a yeah. while. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Do you think there's a lot of um, departments, law enforcement departments that don't have body cameras yet? or? I think we're in the minority okay. without having it. Yeah, and I know one other thing that we talked about was we there is a requirement to have them audited. Right. So you had to be audited every, I think it was annually, and the auditing cost was a couple thousand dollars just to have somebody come in and make sure that you're doing everything the right way. And, and, and at the time, the officers 
didn't necessarily like wearing them, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, so it was a little bit of everything. And, and but now is the time to the technology is so much better now than when we originally had them. Any of the other communities in our county allotted any funds like Donnelly, Alberta, Chicago, Hancock? That was going to be my for question. For this funding? Well, yeah. I'm just looking through the list here. It says Norcross City. I'm just curious if it's our Norcross to the north of us, but just curious if there's funds to our other communities in our county that are allotted some funds also. They all are. Yeah. So just curious if. You know, there's some potential to get some funds from a all the communities exactly. in the county instead yeah. of exactly. just on a share basis. I mean, if they have protection and if they don't have law enforcement in any of their communities for them to participate in it also, just. Mm -hmm. Well, that and that, again, you know, the recommendation is that the joint committee get yeah. together and sit down and talk about all that. And then there'll actually be some additional information before a resolution would be brought back to the council to act on. So something yeah. the joint committee could discuss. Yep, they could. A, a I think it makes sense, yes, yeah. to look into it, but to ask some of these other questions or to get some answers to potentially some of these other things that we can look at. But yes, I think it makes sense to, to move forward and have our, our joint committee yep. again work on it, look at it. You want to set a date for that right now? You're kind of looking No, at I think, I think, I think we should have probably to be coordinated. Uh, just more the county coordinate yep. to see what works or get together yep. with the crew. We were going to try to do it right away, but with everything that's going on with me leaving and stuff like that, it just it made more sense to bring it to you, okay. give, let you know that it's happening, and then set the okay. set the committee in motion to work on it. Sounds good. So we'll just kind of yeah. So I don't know. I that. would suggest that we just yes agree to have a, a work session with the county yep. and. To let Rebecca maybe try to set up a, mm -hmm. a time and a place that works for our committee yep. and use the same committee that we've had in our previous, if that's okay with everyone. Yep. It's fine, yeah. That's still sitting there, so. Do we need to make this a motion or? Uh, um, you could put a motion on the table to have the joint committee uh, look at this issue. Move a motion to do that, a joint committee to look at uh, some public safety aid funding with the county for us to have uh, our two-person committee meet with the county at the county's time and date to be set by them. I will second that. And I think on the, the last go around, I think were you and Brian, right? Yes. And I'm sure if Brian can't make it, one of the other ones, I'm sure would, one of the other ones would definitely step up. So, so we have a motion and a second on that. Uh, we'll just, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Carrie, thanks for coming in, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Good, Good seeing you. you. Thanks. All right, we have no public hearings tonight, so we will move on to reading and approval of the <coughs> June 13th regular meeting minutes. Any discussion on those? Uh, I, I guess I do have a question. Rarely do I ever ask questions on it, but. I was just reading through it, and in the citizens' comments portion, uh, Ashley, it states that where Matt Lucka was talking about that he wants to brew, uh, he wants to brew in his own he, his own beer at his restaurant, and then farther down it says Lucka stated it's only for brewing; they are not a restaurant. So I was just a little confused. His, he says in one one breath he's a restaurant. That's in relation to if you read, it's in relation to the comments about Glenwood. Yeah. The, the oh, okay. That's okay. He was just responding to the regulations. That comments so, from. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that clears it up. Then it's correct. All right. Good. I was just a little confused there. Thanks for squaring me away. Any other discussion on the regular meeting minutes? And then we have the condensed version and uh, work session meeting minutes coming farther down the line here, but. Take one step at a I time. I will move here. approval of those, the regular minutes of June 13th. I will second. Motion and a second to approve the regular meeting minutes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We have the uh, condensed version of the meeting minutes from June 13th also. also. 
I will move approval of the condensed minutes from the June 13th meeting and does that wording need to be or I guess it is no correction it is no. correct yes That's correct. yep I will second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed same sign motion carried now we have the uh, May 30th work session meeting minutes And we'll just need a motion to approve. I will move approval for the work session meeting minutes for May 30th. And I will second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the May 30th work session meeting minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right, moving on, we have the consent agenda, which consists of the audit of city bills, gambling report, Library Board meeting minutes, exempt permit for RUSC Kinship, and a temporary on-sale liquor license for the American Legion. And would there be any discussion on any of the items on the consent agenda? If not, I will entertain a mission, or a motion rather to uh, approve those items. I will so move. I will second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve those items. I guess there was, I just, not really a question on line item 35. I, I see the uh, new Jetter purchase came through. Yep. That's nice to see. That's, what is that, the fuel tank? No. The no, the jet. That's where they clean out the sewers. They they oh. go around and jet oh, out all the sewer oh, okay. sewer lines. So, yeah, it's kind of an important piece of equipment. All right. Any other discussion on the items on consent? I'm just curious, the American Legion, the on sale liquor license, is that strong or three two? I would say I strong, but never. I, I would think it would be strong. It always used to be, but now with all the do they the even sell three two beer anymore? <laughs> that's, a, that's a question. I don't know. Can you? Does anybody even I sell? I think it? by old Minnesota hanging in there, I think it is a requirement. But yeah, I don't hardly know of any place. No, that I does. think I think it's just whatever what what their license is, so they're temporarily allowed to sell at this location. That's what I was assuming. Yep. I'm just curious. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, was there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. <coughs> we have no petitions, requests, and communications. We will move on to resolution, ordinances and resolutions. Uh, the first one we have is a resolution appointing finance director Whitney Millard as interim city manager and uh, I guess what we could do is just uh, entertain a motion uh, on that resolution and then we can have a discussion and then we'll vote I will move on that resolution appointing finance director Mitt Whitney Millard as interim city manager I will second okay we have a motion and a second Appointing Finance Director Whitney Millard as an interim city manager. Is there any discussion or questions about that resolution before we vote? You're comfortable running the show? Absolutely. Thank you. Good. Make sure that all the tough questions come before July 18th, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I guess I, I, I think... You know, we need to thank Blaine. I think it sounds to me, from what I'm hearing, I hear just bits and pieces, but it sounds like he's done a good job. Kind of. Yeah, we've been not actually this. addressing some of the issues of things that uh, I'm responsible for, like uh, um, being the administrator for government contracts. And so we actually updated that. And there's other things like drug alcohol program for our CDL drivers and stuff. So we have to make sure that uh, all that stuff's in place, but uh, we've gone through and uh, looked at a lot of things, and uh, she'll do a fine job. You know, 
we're, we're lucky to have her. We all have full faith in Whitney, for sure. All right, we have a motion and a second on that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll have roll call vote. Please, Ashley. Councilman Rose? Yes. Tony Miller? Yes. Phillipson? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. We have a resolution approving an agreement with Mike Seahawk for public access channel <coughs> system management. Um, this is an annual contract, I believe, and um, I think we all have this in front of us. It seems pretty straightforward to me as there, we'll just need a motion and a second again on that resolution and then we can have a discussion if any. I will move a motion for resolution approving an agreement with Mike Seahawk for the public access channel system management. I will second that motion. Um, I don't. It seems to be working. What uh, Mike has been doing for us, I think it's. Well, I, I think the interesting thing about this, when it first started, it was simply the public access channel. You know, and so then there's a lot of discussion about do we re really and actually when it, when it started there were more than one mm -hmm. channels that had public access, but uh, as of now this is the place where people can have live events, you know, that are are streamed, replays of events and stuff, and so then he handles all that management of of uh, organizations that want to get their uh, activities on TV. So it's it's more of a public access TV channel than it is just information. So I, I think he's done a tremendous job with it and, and uh, we don't have to deal with any of it. He re reconfigured all the equipment and everything so he handles it all and takes care of all the business and, and uh, so it seems to be working very well. As long as you still have a TV channel that has a public access channel on it. So, so there is no way to stream it off of anything else but your cable? Or can you well, stream? no, I think there's still, there's still people that will, will have that cable system that will go there to watch these events and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, maybe older people, uh, grandparents and stuff like that, but uh, it, there seems to be an interest in it, you know, and, and there's definitely interest in people streaming stuff. We're grandparents, no way. Yeah, I know we are. <laughs> is there is there some way you can hook up that? Maybe not because it's for cable, but to like our our website, so people can pull it off our website. I don't know. We, we could a, we could ask them strictly for the because there's only one. I mean, unless you have the one cable. Right. Well, yeah, and that is the interesting part. Our part that people, if they want to watch their grandchildren's sporting events, if they are picking those up or the different things that they can go to a, a city website if we can't download I, it off of that? I think the answer to that is yes, and I've talked to him about that. I think he just hasn't got around to, you know, he's a very busy guy too yeah. with the university and all the things he does out there, but I think he knows how to do that. I mean, it'd be nice because I get where you had to set it up and get everything right. rolling and now we got it rolling and it sounds like interest, but maybe we can take it to the next level right. of... Hey, let's and put this on a it. website and link it. Yeah, if we it. linked it to our website, that would be good. Because it also would get people to our website. Yeah. Checking things out. So because, I think, like I think say, the answer is yes. What percentage of our community does not have a, the fixed cable system that they're off of some other type? So just if we can try to. But yes, I've heard very minimal complaints, issues with it. And between church service and sporting events, I think it's gone very, very good. All right, we have a motion and a second on that resolution. Is there any more discussion on that? Hearing none, we'll have roll call vote on that resolution, please, Ashley. Councilmember Salvi? Rose? Yes. Phillipson? Yes. Miller? Yes. Mayor Rollers? Yes. All right, moving on. We have a resolution adopting assessment for current services. Yeah, these are things that we send bills out for, and if they don't pay their bills as, as uh, homeowners and uh, organizations that own the, uh, the uh, properties, we can assess the cost to them. And you know, you, normally we're seeing like utility bills or snow removal, mowing and stuff like that. 
Um, in this case, you see there's a couple curb shutoffs. So if we go to shut off water because they didn't pay their bill and we find out that the curb stop isn't working, there is a requirement to have it fixed. If they don't fix it, then we go and fix it for them and then we assess the property for the cost of that. Mm -hmm. So that's what the shut off valve issues are on there. So this is the way we, we have an opportunity to try to collect our money. So it goes on to the property as a, a tax, assessment on their property taxes, and that's how we get it collected. All right, uh, we'll need a motion on that resolution, please. I'll move on that resolution, adopting the assessment for current services. I will second. All right, we have a motion and a second on a resolution adopting assessment for current services. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll have roll call vote on that resolution, Ashley. Yes. Dalton? Yes. Charles? Yes. Salvi? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Just a quick question on that. If we went, the only reason these shutoffs were assessing them is because we had to go shut their water off in the first place? Right. If we would have been current, we wouldn't have known that we had right. a bad shutoff? Yeah, we wouldn't have known. Okay. So, sort of rolls upon yourself by not paying that we find out. Okay. Okay. Last but not least, we have the added State of Minnesota contract resolution for airport for an airport apron project. I think we all received a, an email update on that resolution. Yeah. So this is the, the the last big project that we're doing out there. So this is doing some maintenance on the apron, and then we're expanding the apron because we put in the uh, parallel taxiway. And making room for it so um, the actual um, the state share for this project is one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars so this is the state contract that they want us to sign uh, uh, the local share on this is about eighty two thousand and we've already I think we already did a resolution to move that money into this project fund and then the federal share of this project is a million twenty five thousand six hundred and thirty seven dollars that's in in this contract we have so we just need a resolution uh, authorizing us to execute this agreement with the state and then uh, we should be good to go on it more confirmation than anything this is more or less housekeeping paperwork right and then this one will start next year this I think I mentioned before that <clears throat> they originally were going to move the crack sealing and stuff to next year and do everything next year with this. Uh, but then they decided to go ahead and do the crack sealing project on the parallel taxiway. And that's, I think, done now. They were in town doing that work. And then this one will start next spring. Okay. All right. Any questions? <clears throat> uh, otherwise, we'll, uh, I'll ask for a Motion to approve that resolution um, for the state of Minnesota contract for airport apron project. I will move approval of a grant with the state of Minnesota or for the state airport fund grant agreement as presented to us. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that or questions? Hearing none, we'll have roll call vote on that resolution. Please, Ashley. Council Member Gillespie? Yes. Miller? Yes. Salvi? Rowe? Yes. Mayor Wallers? Yes. Okay, we have um, the city manager's newsletter, I guess, would be the next item up. <clears throat> the last city manager's newsletter. The last. So uh, I'll, I'll just start off by saying I had my last staff meeting this morning and thank the staff for all the work that they, they've done. And I've been very blessed with staffs over the years and being able to find people as, as people move along in their retirements and things like that. And so I think the, the city's in very good shape. And, and Whitney and I had a little talk this morning too 
because we're very lucky to have Whitney here, and, and she's been doing lots of things to kind of watch over stuff as, as you transition into the new city manager that's coming in. Uh, we had a nice little event last night at uh, Old Number One Southside with uh, Professor Vetter and Dr. Uh, um, Engel from the uh, university and the Climate Smart Municipalities Group, Morse Model people, and, and actually we had two state senators here and a uh, representative, house representative from, from uh, um, North, North St. Paul, North Minneapolis, um, that were here because of the things that we're doing. And, you know, I said it last night, I've been very fortunate to have good city councils uh, over all the years, and, and sometimes um, that makes things a lot easier to be able to present and do the things that you need to do, and we've done a lot of stuff here. I mean, if you look back over the years, <coughs> all the different things that have have been happening, it's, it's, it's really nice to see, and, and quite frankly, you know, the fact that I grew up here and that I'm going to be living here the rest of my life, you know, it's maybe a little self-serving that we made more uh, such a good place to live in, but but it's really really the quality of all the people that are part of the process, and it's amazing to me. I, I was in Duluth last week for the League of Minnesota Cities conference, and I want to mention a couple things that that I learned there. But um, um, people know where Morris is. I started doing a kind of an impromptu survey of. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard, I think it's the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. You know, how you can take seven steps to get to Kevin Bacon from just about anybody. Well, it's it's Morris. It, it's just funny. You go into a shop and somebody walks up to you and it's like, where are you from? From Morris. Oh, yeah, my, my daughter went to Morris. You know, so it was like, daughter went to Morris. Uh, daughter's going to go to Morris. I went to Morris. Uh, uh, Pete. White Cough was the, he's the new uh, one of the new commissioner assistant commissioner for uh, for a lot of the federal funds that are going to be coming out. He is a professor here, and so it's like every time you turn around, you you meet somebody that was from here or had a connection to here. Uh, Sarah Kissock's daughter uh, is a mayor. Uh, um, a lot of us older people remember some of the people, and, and and so it was it's fun. And then you get into the sustainability stuff where. Um, state commissioners know who you are. Um, city leaders from around Minnesota know who we are here in Morris because of all the things that we're working on. They're amazed at how how we can get things done out here. Um, so so that was a fun part of being there um, and and uh, getting to know a lot of different people. And so one of the things that that I learned there that that I'll give you a heads up because I didn't get a chance to put it into the newsletter, but um, um, there's a big issue with lead pipes, and um, we have to survey all the pipes in, in Morris, going all the way up to the houses to find out where there's lead pipes. There's big chunks of money. I talked to Jeff Kuhn this morning about it, uh, and uh, to even money to, to help survey the community to find out what kind of lead pipes we have and to start replacing them. So that was probably the biggest takeaway I learned from the legislate or the league conference in Duluth is that you know, we, we need to pay attention to that to maybe to get that done and help everybody out. But there's lots of other money that's gonna be coming down for lots of different things. And, and, and so it's very important to keep on top of that. And, and uh, when it comes to the, uh, the newsletter itself, um, uh, maybe I'll just touch on a couple things that are here. The next meeting, I've already done a resolution up for the next meeting. I won't be here, but we have the public hearing on our wellhead protection plan, uh, and then we'll have to adopt that plan and, and then get it turned into the state. The pickleball court fences started going up. If you've been by there, they uh, started putting the fences up, and then after that's done, they'll come in and do the uh, um, the surfacing of it and then put up the nets and the hoops, and we should be ready to go with that. And and then, uh, you know, the probably the last thing is uh, that that issue that came up last time with uh, you know the brewing beer that'll go to the planning commission, um, we'll send some information on at the next meeting and and then we'll get started on that. But other than that, um, time time goes on, things keep happening, and 
and uh, Whitney will kind of watch over it for a couple weeks, and then when the new city manager comes in, uh, should be able to jump right right into everything. And I, and I appreciate the ability to. The, maybe the one last thing that I'll say because I I never really. When I was in Brackenridge, I had a chance to say this. Uh, I had another career, and that was in the military. And the only reason that was successful for 34 years was because I worked for city governments that knew and understood the importance of that and allowed me the time off to be able to go to a lot of different things that I had to take care of uh, when I was when I was doing that job. And, and one of the things I shared with somebody is one of the positions I had in in the National Guard in Minnesota was the administrative officer and then the logistics officer for Minnesota Troop Command, which is the, the command that oversees all civil disturbance in Minnesota. So in my job, if I would have been our, there when George Floyd happened, I would have been the person that would have been con coordinating all the logistics for that operation. So I've had an opportunity to see a lot of things, but that only works when when you have an understanding council and, and you know really good people working with you um, that that allows people like me to be able to go out and do those jobs so everybody's protected. So I, I appreciate that, having that ability to do that as a city manager here and, and uh, um, you know, life's been good. Now I get to go fishing and enjoy the grandkids and all those kind of things, but the city of Morris will be in good hands. I see we are the proud owner officially of a park now over yeah. at Skyview. Yeah, it was inter <laughs> interesting how that deed came after the discussion started. <laughs> Manna from heaven. For that. For that. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to have a naming ceremony or contest <laughs> for that unknown park. Can't just call it. Well, I suppose you could call it unknown park, but. <laughs> Wish you could be able to come up with something better than that. Any other questions on any of this at all? Otherwise, the one, one thing I did do, and I said I was going to do it, and I actually sent you a couple other pieces of information that, that you can have, but um, typically in June I would put together the city manager's preliminary guidance for the upcoming budget because June, July, August is when you start doing the preliminary budget planning and everything. And so I did put together what I thought I would would provide to you, and that's just information to you that you can have. And then when Rebecca gets here, she can take it and, and do what she wants with it. But it gives you a pretty good idea of the kinds of things that we're looking at at, at coming up that we're going to have to think about when we're doing things. So, so I'll leave that for you. And I'm leaving a couple more things for Whitney as far as some of the the things that that we're doing and and hopefully just that'll be it. Working until the very end, aren't you? Good for you. Well, well, <laughs> well, you were both there when I said uh, this is finals week for uh, for mm -hmm. me. So uh, so if I get all my work in and it gets accepted and I clean out my locker and get that taken care of, then uh, hopefully I'll be able to graduate on Friday and then we're all going over to the Eagles afterwards for a party and. And uh, I posted something on Facebook. I don't know who, if, if anybody has me on Facebook, but I said, and law enforcement does know where the party is for graduation, so, <laughs> so we don't have to worry about hiding from them. But yeah, so, but it's, it's, it's bittersweet, you know, but yet at the same time, that's the way it works. Thank you for providing all that information, Blaine. And was there any discussion on the preliminary budget that actually is one of the next things? But I, I skimmed through it, and one question I did have for you that you could probably help help me out with, um, I didn't see any dollars for the museum on there, and I guess it was kind of brought to my attention by uh, uh, Cam, the director there, that there were some items that, the, that could be addressed at the museum, and I don't know if you've allocated or set aside any money on that. She was particularly talking about... Uh, the windows in the basement, she said, leak. And yeah, so that's, you know, we, we do have, the architects looked at the library and looked at the liquor store and uh, looked at Wells Park uh, bathroom and came up with some conceptual things about 
you know, what to do with those. But we did, when they're in town looking, we did have them go over and look. The, the steps on that museum are, are failing a little bit. And so water's getting into that bottom area. And so that, that is something that needs to be looked at. So, um, but that's a good example of as the budget's being put together, I, I tried to think of everything that I could. Yeah. But that's, yeah, definitely bring that up. And, and so the next step would be to figure out how to, how to structurally, you know, seal that up again to protect it. Okay. Uh, I think this, it's an old building, very okay. old building. Yeah, thank you for that. I, yep. I didn't know what kind of had been done and what hadn't been done, but that's good to know. Any other questions for Blaine before speak now or forever hold your peace? Okay. Um, any other business? Uh, I just have one question for you in the other business segment here. Um, I had a person from Line Drive. I was out walking the other day and they stopped me. I happened to be right out by the ballpark there and the individual asked me, whose responsibility that line drive is, because there's uh, some potholes and things like that in there that need to be addressed. And I said, well, my answer is, I said, well, I, I thought that was developed by Joe Riley. And I thought my initial response was that maybe it was his responsibility. And so I, I, I just picked up the phone and called Greg out at Joe Riley's and just to find out if who's, you know, what they knew about whose responsibility was, and he talked to Joe, and Joe, I guess, doesn't know. And I thought I'd, now, so now I'm back to you, I guess, that who actually is responsible to maintain that? So they're called, they're, they're called plan unit developments. And so then they, the, uh, the, the owners of property, they actually only own their houses. And, and so then the, and Iowa Avenue is the same way. So I had a call late, early in the morning. It was like three o'clock in the morning because Iowa Avenue townhomes were flooding, and they wanted, you know, to get the city crew out there to take care of that road. Well, it's their road, you know, and and uh, there as in homeowners. the homeowners association, association. owns it. So okay. they do they do all the snow plowing, they do all the mowing, they do everything, and so as. You know, um, my understanding is they own their houses, but uh, the property around them is not theirs. And then, because we had a request, could you come and get our pile of snow out of our neighborhood? You know, and it, and then it was like, well, we pay taxes, so why can't we have that done? And it's like because that's the way you set it up. You know, it is not it is not our responsibility, our road. It is yours, and you pay somebody. They're paying somebody to maintain this stuff, so. Somebody's got to go in and redo the road, and and uh, um, and well, and Jay's here. Um, these these were not accepted by the city. Iowa Avenue was not accepted by the city because they're built to a different standard, and and uh, we build them to a standard that the roads will hold up, and then we maintain them in in a manner so that as as they age, they're aging the right way and stuff, and. So now they're at a point where they probably have to have somebody come in and fix potholes, and I don't okay. know if they're seal coating them or whatever, but somebody else asked me about that too. So there, there's a president of a homeowners association that knows the answer to that. And actually, probably Riley Properties is the overall property manager um, for that, for those developments. So for us to take that over would probably have to be built to our standards, right. our requirements. Yep. At agreeable to us and then for us like we have with the uh, development out on the north edge of town that was done I believe by Riley Brothers but it was built with I think Jay overseeing and was built to standard yeah the hilltop to one us. was built to the right standard how about the one out along the bypass the Riley townhomes out there is that the same or not I think that one was done the right way so, we so it's just really the street. This just really Iowa Avenue and this Iowa like, Avenue and Line yeah, Drive. The line, drive. line Drive, I think, are the two. You know, and then you know we've had this discussion when we we're talking about Seventh Street. You know, where um, if you go down below the hill on Seventh Street uh, and take a left, um, that's all private. You know, and so every once in a while somebody will ask a question about it, and it's like there's a sign that says private. And so all they have to do is say it's not private, 
and we would come in there and we would plow and we'd do other things for them, but they, they don't want anybody else driving through their neighborhood. But, but that's the way it works with these two. Okay, and we do have, when was the city water and sewer added there? Was that at the same time as the development or did that come later? No, that was when they were developed. We, you know, I, I supervised the putting in of the sewer and the water there and the storm sewer because that's a city, it's a city utility. You know, they pay sewer and water. Uh, right. Yeah. And stuff like that. But once the road and the, all the other stuff came through, I didn't have anything to do with that. So the utilities underground then, is that our responsibility then? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I that would, would be so. ours. Yeah. Okay. Well, it comes in but from surface, it comes in from Seventh Street. Okay. Yeah. Just to be clear, right? Yeah, it comes in from Iowa Avenue, actually. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, Avenue, on that one. Iowa Avenue is a city street. Right. right. But it's the horseshoe that goes around into where those townhomes are. Yeah. So Iowa Avenue is a city. It, street. Okay. But okay. It's whatever that other horseshoe is called, and I don't remember what that's called anymore. Back where Jim told just lives. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. That clears it up then. So if there is a failure in the utilities underground, that would be on us, but the surface repair and stuff is on the homeowners and their is that, association. I mean, is that a practice to just say, now we're going to put this in and then we can't... I mean, is there a point where the city can say, if you want this, it's in city limits... If you want I think city, the city water and sewer, have. you need to. But no, I'm yeah, just, and yeah. I know that's past is past, but yeah. going forward, I guess we have some situations that have come up that are like, well, why would we? I mean, if you want to develop, great, but here's the standards you have to meet to develop. Right. Is that, I mean, is that something that can be done going forward? It was a big discussion back, uh, you know, when Skyview and Brook Street, uh, yeah, Skyview Development yeah. was put yeah. in Floyd Schmidt Golf. The original design they wanted to just put in like six inches of gravel and two inches of blacktop this was before i think you were yeah. playing and so it was a big discussion and so we said well we're not going to accept it until they do it to city standards and so they redesigned it and and then it was built to our standards it just causes a lot of trouble yeah, down well, the road and just pushes everything down which gets more expensive than well, I was I was out in that neighborhood out there at three o'clock in the morning looking at water coming up their driveway and I think I called the public works director and he goes, That's not ours. It's okay. theirs. They're uh, they have their own stormwater pond that needs to be cleaned out because it's full of trees and stuff like that and, and uh and sometimes the homeowners might not even know they, this. They, they I mean, I would say that. Yeah, they did not. A high well, that's percentage. Why they to well, they yeah, I, I yeah. can get saving, where they're saving money. But. Save money on the front end. It's cheaper to get into it, as Brian said with the hillside addition when he was out there. You know, the same thing. It was cheaper. Well, if you do this and this, it, it was much cheaper than building in at the time. So it's just uh, save a little money up front, but now you're going to probably pay for it on the back end. I was surprised that Joe didn't know that. It shocked me really. I mean, he's the one that developed it. I think he knew it. He knew. It. He knew. It. He, knew <laughs> he know. He knows exactly how all this. He stuff didn't works. want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I've talked to, I've talked to Joe, you know, a hundred times over over my time since I've been here in two thousand seven, and in a lot of a lot of cases, you know, well, even with Seventh Street when we had that discussion, yep. they they knew how all that stuff worked. You know, that's what they do for a living is they right. develop these things. For sure. But now we know. I mean, and now yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, the, the hindsight is, you know. Yeah, going well. Going forward, let's just really yeah, think about came, long term how this is going to affect. If one came up, you know, I, I would have a very serious discussion about it. You know, is this yeah. the way, you know, and, you know, the sad part is nobody owns anything yet. So, yeah. you know, but, but, but it, is a, it is a way of de developing. We have a couple of them, but. If you get down in the Twin Cities, uh, you know, you see a lot of information about these planned unit developments where the cities aren't allowed to go in and do certain things now that they allowed them to establish and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's it's too bad for the people. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to get back to this person and tell him to get his shovel ready. <laughs> yeah, they should be doing maintenance. Yeah. They're paying for it, I think. For sure. Thank you for clearing that up. I appreciate that. Um, we will, any other business anybody would like to bring up before we move on? None? Okay, we will move on to our informational items. Uh, the aforementioned Green Step Cities Award, I guess. 
We were you were presented that last night. Uh, that was no, that was uh, at the league conference. So there should be a picture coming, um, and it was announced during the uh, annual awards banquet um, that that uh, we were. We, we were actually awarded uh, Green Step 4 again and Green Step 5, but that's really Griffin. You know, Green Step 5 is data. You know, you had to mine the data and then regurgitate it and present it back to the, to the Green Step people in order to get credit for it, and that's exactly what happened. You know, so it was kind of nice to, I didn't think we'd get to that one because when I looked at the requirements, it's like, I don't know how we're gonna do this. But Griffin knew how to do it, so. So, and I actually, if you look at our little little award over there, I put the blocks on, so now we have a, another block on on uh, the other side for uh, Green Step 5, and we had a little sticker I put on the door of the building. And so it's nice to be recognized. There's not a lot of uh, level five uh, communities in Minnesota. What's next then? Is there levels, how many levels? Yeah, that, that's it, we're at the top. We so are now we, we We're can uh, maintain it. All right. So if we don't maintain, we lose it. <laughs> no, you, 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 you'll, you'll always be <laughs> recognized as a level level five. You know, but if you if you continue on with the process, you can keep getting more blocks. Like you know, for different years. Oh. Yeah. So. Cool. Right That's on. cool. Good deal. Good stuff. Any other business to come before the council? Hearing none, meeting adjourned. Good luck.